right. We'll definitely get a walk down. Yeah. Just... There you go. All right. So we're going to start at Bram Hall. I loved it. All right, now I'm going to do another one. All right. Do another one. No, yeah. man, these are off the cuff. Be more aggressive. Yeah. We're going to start at Bram Hall. We're starting at Bram Hall. <laughs> Tucked away sanctuary from the bustling strip of Congress Street and under the watchful eye of my apartment. Waxen, dark, and full of historical values, one feels slightly transported to another time. An original speakeasy during the days of Prohibition, it still retains some level of secrecy and intimacy for those in its ancient brick. Conversations go deep here, and one finds themselves adverse to all small talk. Here, one talks about the real issues facing humanity. Enjoy a fancy cocktail of your choosing or take solace in one of the few places you can still get a $3 brew. I'm drinking a classic Narragansett on tap. The statue of Portland's finest poet sits austere outside the windows of this bustling corner bar. Ancient keys of typewriters line the bar as high lives and pony bottles shuffle and cascade across the bookish scene. It is a place for writers. Stacks of literature surround the patrons as they imbibe on a variety of delectable elixirs. If one is lucky enough to sit at the window, they see the purest gradient of the Portland patrons. Homeless in the park by one Longfellow Square, the restaurant working with headphones and wondering if they can last another shift. The yuppie in white taking a picture of their food. People losing control of their dogs. It's great. It's a lighthouse for those who still possess the poetic spirit. A place to gaze out to the rocking ocean. Maybe I should finish my novel. Maybe I should call her. Maybe, just, maybe. What would Longfellow do? DTL, right across the street from the former porn theater, the state. Yo, so tell us what happened to Mitch. Mitch left the script at LFK. Why, we don't know. How's it make you feel, Simon? The uh, Bud Light? No, Mitch leaving the script at LFK. Oh, is that where he's going to get it? Running yeah. Right Alright, so I lost the script at the last bar. But I got it. I don't do the, the tap on the table thing like oh, everybody sure. else does. Why I don't, don't you guys do that? Yeah. That's unnecessary. That's like a, you That's like a, it's not unnecessary. You know what? You want to have that beer you know in the what? first place? I'm not crazy about the cheers. What? Oh, I'm not crazy about the then cheers. Then you should have never been allowed to have the drink. You're sp it's supposed to be reflecting on the hard times in life. If Portland can say it still has dive bars, which is increasingly difficult given its begrudging social economic status and lack of affordable housing for restaurant employees, then DTL would be atop that radiant list. I am good to go. All right. You know why you're here. You came here to dance with the fancy women because your buddy finally scored you some drugs you were looking for. I'm going to do that one more time. <laughs> big boys, big boys. You know why you're here. You came here to dance with the fancy woman because your buddy finally scored some drugs you were looking for. Getting fucked up is great. But getting fucked up while fancy and unable to hold conversations because of a rapidly increasing BPM, now we're cooking with gas. What was once a quaint wine bar has now become one of Maine's premier clubs. It's hard to find a place in Maine quite like Citrus, and the Citrus folks like that. You've said your lines for the night. The hot takes are coming in a bit lackadaisical. It's time to put your body in motion and let the mind take a break. Sure, 
We're all funny, charming people, but life's better with a dance. Unfortunately, it's closed, so we can't get in. Here we are at $3 Dewey's. Um, there used to be drinks that were $3, but now there's nothing that is $3. One for a touchy, two for a feely, three for a dewy. Portland CD Pass is reflected upon this old port staple. Like, could one really just walk down here and fuck a prostitute? There must still be places that have that happen. I mean, it's not like someone turned off the horniness in this town, right? The waterfront was a... <laughs> the waterfront was a place for men to come after they got off the boat. Wait. Did you mean come like come? You spelt it C-O-M-E. The waterfront was a place for men to come after they got off the boat, not for girls from Connecticut to get shit-faced after they didn't eat dinner. <laughs> Times change. The waterfront and its changing pace are reflected perfectly in this establishment. While well, sucking and fucking are gone, we can at least pour cheap drinks and serve decent food to the masses. Three dollar Dewey's is towards the end of the Old Port Strip and serves as a nice launching or ending pad for any level of debauchery. honky-tonk establishment that looks like it fell off the back of the hee-haw set and landed in a quaint seaside town. In between sips of fireball, one can hear a man yell from the back, lock her up, and they took our jobs. One forgets really where they are for a few moments. Its comforts lie in its absolute state of irony. If a country bar like this can exist here, what's holding me back to my hopes and dreams? I could be something. Let's have some good southern fun. You also know what they say about horse girls. They're crazy enough to love something that will never love them back. We can work with that. Mexicana Restaurante? Camina? I thought people just came here to black out. Pool tables, dartboards, live music out back. What better place to end the night? One could simply utter pitcher, smoke, or coke and be accepted into the rank and file of this nocturnal cantina. Is it really a night in the old port without stopping at Amigos? Probably not. Did we grow out of it? Not really so much. Portland needs to be reminded that it's not a postcard, but a buffet for drunkenness. What I am very upset about and is a, like a, a surprise to me is that Blue Rooster is, is done. Apparently that's gone. And it was, uh, I, I, I will miss it. I will miss it dearly. Explorer. This place will hide on you. Five dollars and a bit of the adventurous spirit will land you in one of Portland's finest speakeasy establishments. You just must possess some yeah, currency with a picture of Mary Todd's husband to buy. Ah! 
Five dollar bills ready, man. We're going in. Well, anything. Food, beer, vodka, trans, anything you could desire. A popular spot for comedy nights, as well as general drunken adventures that require some level of an underground setting, which seems to be the thing these days. The couches give one a sense of belonging. I did it, right? Here at the snug, uh, maybe uh, maybe I'll find somebody here to uh, snuggle with. I don't I don't I don't know I don't know what I have nothing. Uh, here we go. Three, two, one, boom. Hell yeah. How do I say the third word here? Hibern Hibernia. Yeah, it's Hibernia. Hibernia. Yeah. Hibernia. Look at. All of Hibernia rejoices at this Celtic staple. Right at the base of Munjoy Hill, and fully haunted by the neighboring graveyard, they hear this town ain't what it used to be. Ain't what it used to be. The snug is just the right place to take a crew. They love dogs, food, and even Protestants. <laughs> the booths, or as they're appropriately named, snugs, provide a level of intimacy rarely found in our digitized lives. Here a group can fully plan their conspiratorial plans far from the pesky ears of concerned progressives. <laughs> okay. okay. Excuse me? Alright. <laughs> One could spend an entire evening here slugging down Guinnesses and arguing with ghosts or humans. <laughs> Thank God for Ireland. <laughs> Unbelievable. What a job, Alex. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm at the point where I, like, I can't have one more drink, but I, uh, we I still have, have one have, more spot. But I have to have one more drink. We have to go to one more spot. We are at the last stop of this uh, tour, and uh, it, it turns out to be Munjoy Hill Tavern. If you could turn around. All right. It's true. The Gilded Life follows those who live upon Portland Gallant Hill. Fathers would tell their daughters never to date a boy who lives up on the hill. Yet here we are, in the safest place imaginable, surrounded by the friends we love. Of course, the old port is fun, but there we always feel on edge. Here there is safety and security. The friends we make on the way are great, but who will sit with us in the final hours scheming up some way <laughs> to smoke a joint on the hill <laughs> and watch the night slowly shut off its lights. It was always you I wanted to spend time with, but you took me on this drunken escape that almost killed me. It's over. 